Hey, hello everyone, guys. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our platform, and uh, let's start today's session. So, in our earlier sessions, we have studied about uh, various things like uh, the, what uh, all are the different activation functions available for uh, deep learning, and uh, uh, maybe we have uh, seen lots of things again. So, uh, guys, uh, now in today's session, we all are going to, uh, you know, explain about uh, this various various cost functions available in terms of a uh, deep learning. So, uh, yeah, so basically, maybe uh, whether I'm talking about a machine learning, whether I'm talking about a deep learning. So at every places, we are going to create a model and that model is supposed to, you know, give some kind of prediction, some kind of a for forecasting, some kind of a values and uh, there should be some kind of differences between your actual values and your predicted values and that particular difference is known as error right and uh, in that way i have also discussed about what is a loss and what is a cost function so yeah so today in this uh, session i'm going to explain each and everything in a very detail right and uh, guys if you are new here just try to subscribe the channel and please give us a like Okay, so fine guys, now let's start the session and uh, yeah, so today I'm going to talk about this uh, loss or maybe a cost function. So basically guys, uh, whenever we are going to, you know, calculate the difference between uh, uh, between your actual y and your predicted y. So this difference is known as error, right? Error. Now, whenever we are going to pick and choose a single record out of our data and we are going to calculate its uh, you know its error that particular error is known as loss loss for that single record but whenever there are multiple records maybe two record three record four records five records ten records 50 records 100 records in that case we are not going to pass just only a single record but in that case we are going to pass a batch right batch means a group of records a group of multiple records we are going to pass so that particular batch will getting passed now there are two different types of batches available guys the one batch is first one batch is batch right b a t c h batch so this batch is what so this batch is that so whenever we are going to you know you know batch is just a kind of a collection just a kind of collection where whether there will be some uh, there will be some definite number of records will be available in that batch, right? So uh, batch will just be a record. But if there are n number of records available in your data, suppose there are thousand number of records available inside your data, and you are making a batch. Now this batch can have uh, maybe any number of records, maybe two record, maybe three record, maybe ten record, hundred record, two hundred record, five hundred records, right? So if there are all thousand records available in this single batch this will be known as a batch right batch now there will be some kind of mini batches mini batches means what so mini batches means that a kind of batch which are not having huge amounts of record they will be having only some a small amounts of record maybe 100 records maybe 50 records maybe 200 records maybe 300 records something like that so there will be a batch which will be having n number of records and there will be mini batches which will be having i can say some uh, a small amount of records so whenever we are going to pass any kind of batch or maybe any kind of mini batches in that case in that case we are not going to calculate a loss yeah it's fine it is a loss right but there we are going to calculate a combined loss not a loss for a single record but we are going to calculate a combined loss and how we are going to calculate a combined loss so there we are trying to calculate losses for each and every records and after calculating that uh, you know that losses maybe so whatever losses we are calculating for each and every records we are going to sum them up we are going to uh, you know aggregate them up we are going to uh, uh, you know, uh, we will try to perform a summation over each and every records, each and every losses, right? So in that way, whatever uh, whatever uh, value you are going to get, right? So whenever you are going to combine your each and every losses, 
for a single batch or maybe uh, any kind of batch or maybe mini batch in that case your loss is known as your combined loss will be known as a cost right <coughs> it will be known as a cost not a loss so there is a very thinner difference between a loss and a cost function so loss will be um, just uh, you know uh, it will be just for a single record but cost will be a combined loss for multiple records so guys today uh, we are going to study about various cost functions again you can you can say loss function or maybe cost function both are uh, maybe you uh, are trying to you know notate uh, 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 same thing similar kind of thing so again see here there are a uh, and there are l1 and l2 uh, loss available here so if we can talk about a regression problem and if uh, if uh, uh, we are going to you know recall uh, you know uh, this loss functions from our machine learning classes so uh, in machine learning so again for a regression problem uh, there uh, there is a ma right mean absolute error there is a msc uh, mean squared error there is a rmsc root mean squared error so this kind of performance matrix available there right and we have to calculate this three different types of losses for our huge cases right yeah now those similar things are available here so that ma that your mean absolute error is nothing but its least absolute deviations its another name is least absolute deviations in short lad and it is also known as your l1 loss so l1 loss is having two names least absolute deviation mean absolute error and this l1 loss is defined as the combined sum of or maybe uh, aggregated sum of all the absolute differences in between the actual value and the predicted value so see suppose we are having a number of records right then what we are trying to do so we are trying to calculate losses for each and every n records separately so there will be maybe l1 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 means that uh, uh, loss one yeah so there will be loss one loss two loss three loss four loss five loss n right so n number of losses we are going to get now whatever uh, now what we are trying to do so just a simple differences we are not going to calculate we are not only going to subtract this y predicted Uh, from this y true no we are going to calculate the absolute differences absolute differences means what means that we are going to calculate an absolute value and if i can uh, <coughs> talk about this absolute value so there is a absolute function right there is a absolute function in a mathematics which is going to give you which is going to give you always a kind of i can say a positive value whether you are going to input a positive value or maybe a negative value it is always going to give you a positive value so if i can try to google these things maybe absolute value function so maybe again there is some kind of modulus functions right available yeah see so this is this is the absolute value function this is and uh, see here there are two parallel lines and in between we are placing this x so this is known as uh, we uh, we can try to say we can we can you know uh, we can say this thing this particular you know entity as mod x these two lines are known as mod mod means what mod means modulus and this is known as modulus function so you can say uh, either a modulus function or maybe an absolute function so this is modulus function and this modulus function will try to give you two different things right see here it will try to give you two different things if you are going to uh, you know uh, draw the graph of this modulus function it will be in this shape v shape right v shape it will be in this v shape this will be your x axis this will be your y axis and from this origin this line will go here and this line will go here now if i can try to talk about uh, in a more detail so this modulus function is going to give you x if your input is i mean this modulus function will try to give you output as a positive number if your input is positive or equal to 0 if your 
इनपुट इज निगेटिव और लेस देन जीरो इट विल ऑलवेज ट्राई टू गिव यू अर निगेटिव काइंड ऑफ आउटपुट राइट सो मॉड एक्स विल बी प्लस एक्स इफ दिस एंड मॉड एक्स विल बी माइनस एक्स इफ दिस नाउ इन दिस केस गाइज सी ट्राई टू सी हेयर If the input will be equal to zero or greater than zero, it will try to give you this line. And if we can try to recall about the equation of this line, this is what. This is y will be plus x, right? Y will be plus x. This line is the equation of this line will be y will be plus x. Or maybe so again, um, uh, you know, so from a coordinate geometry, or maybe from a, your childhood. So again, you have uh, studied about coordinate geometry, and they are so. We all know that uh, uh, we can try to represent a, uh, a straight line with the equation y will be m x plus c. So m will be what? M will be the slope of this line, right? M will be slope of this line, and c will be the intercept. So c will try to say c will say that at which point, at which y value, at which y value this line is going to cut the y axis. so this line is cutting the y axis at zero point again if i can uh, talk about this see here this is the picture so again uh, no so try to click here maybe and you will get a good figure right so yeah see here mm -hmm. okay so see here so see this is your y axis right and over this y axis this zero this is origin this origin or is also a point of x axis and also a point of y axis now on this origin guys this origin is also lying upon this y axis so this particular line is this particular line is cutting y axis over zero y will be zero and uh, at which point it is trying to cut that point will be that value will be the value of c that will be known as intercept if this value will cut y axis at 2 then c will be 2 here c will be 0 here c will be minus 2 here c will be minus 4 in that case we are going to calculate the value of c or the value of intercept now what about the m so in the equation of y will be mx plus c there will be a c there will be a m so m will be nothing but your slope slope of your line so guys have you any idea about the slope right have you any idea so slope is what so slope is i can say it's a kind of entity which will try to say that okay fine what is the how much your line is uh, you know how much your line is elevated towards your x axis or maybe what is the angle how much angle your line is making with this particular positive side of this x axis and it's tan tangent means that if i can say uh, this uh, particular m in a very layman uh, layman way so this slope is nothing but this slope is the tangent of tangent of the angle this angle which this line is making with the positive side of x axis so see this is the x axis and from here this is the negative side of x axis and from here this is the positive side of x axis so the angle between this line and this axis this positive side so this angle so tangent of this angle so if there will be theta angle so its tangent means tan theta and the slope of this line will be m is equal to tan theta right m will be tan theta so see now if we can try to see very clearly very clearly right if we can try to see very clearly here or maybe if we can try to use a protractor again again guys it's a very easier thing to get the get the angle from this particular uh, graph right so if you can try to observe here very clearly na so you can get that this line is making equal angle from x axis as well as y axis means that means that this line is making 45 degree of angle with x and 45 degree angle of from this and this line is making equal number of angle this line is uh, you know elevated with uh, uh, equal with a equal amount to both axis right so this line is this line is making equal number of angle equal amount of angle 
from both axes so this angle theta will be we, we don't have to do anything with this angle we only have to consider this angle this angle so suppose this angle will be theta so if you can try to see here uh, clearly there will be 45 degree and if 45 degree then your slope will be equal to tan theta means tan 45 degree and try to recall your trigonometry trigonometry says that tan 45 degree will be equal to 1 so your slope will be 1 right your m will be 1 so your c is 0 your m is 1 in this case then can you try to say the equation of this line y will be mx plus c is the equation of this line where m will be 1 c will be 0 so in that case you are going to get the equation of this line will be y will be x m will be 1 so y will be 1 into x plus 0 and in that case we are going to get y will be x in a similar manner here in this uh, side c will be 0 but here m will be minus 1 how m will be minus 1 so here if we can try to calculate the angle between this line and the positive side of x axis so positive side of x axis will be where this 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 is the positive side this is this is the negative side so we have to calculate the angle between this line and this axis this so here this line is making 45 this line is also making 45 with this y and this x so that's why this will be 45 and this will be 90 so in that case this line is making 135 degree and if you are going to calculate the slope so slope will be tan theta means tan 135 degree and in that case tan 135 will give you a value of minus 1 so there will be y will be equal to minus 1 into x plus 0 so y will be minus x will be the equation of this side and y will be x will be this side so this absolute value function is always going to give you a positive value if your input is positive and if your input is negative it is always going to give you a negative kind of uh, you know output right so this is absolute value function or maybe you can say it as a mod x or maybe a modulus function so the same thing guys we are going to give here but whenever we can try to talk about the range of this function its range will be what so its range will be always lie in between c c range will be what so the if we can talk about a, a mathematical function so there will there will be a two different terms a range and a domain a range is what and domain is what so domain is a kind of a, a thing so domain is also a kind of maybe a so what different uh, you know x values you are going to give this is known as domain so uh, x values there are maybe lots of x values we can try to give because this particular equation is going here in this infinity side here in positive infinity side right so maybe minus infinity to plus infinity will be the domain and if we can try to talk about the range of this function this function is always going to give you a value between between 0 to plus infinity because this y axis is going here inside of infinity positive infinity so its range will be 0 to plus infinity it will never go lie between um, uh, sorry uh, beyond this uh, this 0 i mean uh, uh, what i can say means uh, lower than this uh, uh, 0 so it will never give you a negative value it will always give you a positive value in this case right so guys whatever values you are going to give inside this function it will always try to give you a positive kind of output and uh, this is the function that we are going to use here so we are going to calculate the absolute differences in between the actual value and predicted value and then we are going to sum them up which will be known as your l1 loss function now we can talk about l2 loss function so l2 loss function is also known as a mean squared error right or mse so it is uh, used to minimize the error which is the sum of all the square differences between the actual value and predicted value so here we are not going to do this kind of thing this uh, you know absolute kind of thing here we are going to uh, square these differences so whatever differences we are going to get for each and every losses each and every records we are supposed to do 
the uh, squaring operation we are going to uh, square them up and then we are going to sum them up and in that case guys we are going to get this l2 loss function now people have uh, made a statement that l1 loss is more sensitive to outliers and controls them so it always advisable to use l1 loss in case of outliers otherwise go with l2 loss so see here uh, whenever we are talking about uh, maybe outliers, so outliers are uh, having uh, some kind of a specific value which will be very much different, will be very much different from other normal values, right? So, in a uh, case of uh, outliers, uh, so whenever we are going to calculate the, you know, losses, so here uh, we are not going to uh, square them up. Maybe if I am going to get here minus 2, so applying a modulus function, we are going to get only 2, right? If our loss is two, uh, loss is minus two, we will get only two. If uh, your loss is two, we are again going to get a two. But here, if we are going to get a minus two or maybe two, we are going to get four. So this will try to increase your loss, right? And if there are outliers, this is not a good loss function. In that case, go with a L1 loss, right? If you are having some kind of outliers, go with this one. Now Python implementation for L1 and L2 losses. See guys, so again, uh, there is a library. There is a library, NumPy, right? So if we can talk about a NumPy, so maybe in a NumPy, there are two different functions. So uh, in a NumPy, there are two different functions. That is a NumPy, sorry. There is a absolute function, absolute function in a NumPy. So see guys, whenever you are going to a study about a deep learning kind of thing, so their NumPy will be too much important. You have to go with NumPy. So see, np.abs. ABS is uh, the function method that we are going to use and NP is the alias if you are aware about uh, NumPy. So we are going to use, uh, we are going to utilize this uh, NP.abs function and inside this one, whatever, you know, loss function, loss losses we are going to get, we are going to put place these things inside this one, maybe array or maybe list, whatever thing, and it will try to give you the absolute value. Again, if I can try to, uh, you know, find about the square, so maybe for a square, uh, we will be having some kind of thing. So see, np dot square again a similar kind of function we are going to get from numpy side and we will be able to calculate these things right so l1 loss and l2 loss both of the losses we will be able to calculate with the help of numpy methods right np.abs np.square but using a core python we will also be able to calculate these things and again there is one another very beautiful library which people have designed people from google have designed that is known as tensorflow so if you are going to study deep learning in that case you are going to use tensorflow library and inside this tensorflow library you are going to get you are going to deal with various tensors right tensors so we will come to this point what we, uh, what is a tensor what is a vector these things but here in a tensorflow library, we are having a, a various, various, you know, multiple functions available, like as in a NumPy. So in a NumPy, ABS and a square are available. In a similar way, in a tensorflow library, these functions are available. So we can directly use this tensorflow, so tf.abs, and then we can try to do these things, right? So uh, in this way, we can try to implement these things. But again, yeah, there is a Huber loss. Hoover loss is a combination of L1 and L2 losses in this user, the threshold by uh, this one. See, what is happening here? So people were thinking that, okay, fine. So again, uh, if there will be outliers, we can go with L1. But uh, uh, if there will not be outliers, why we will try to go with L1? We, we can go with L2. But again, having two different kind of functions is not a good thing for us. So people have derived a new function. And then they said that, okay, fine. So we will try to create one another new function that will be a Huber loss. And this Huber loss is defined as, so fx will be, fx will, this function will try to give this kind of expression if your loss function, see, they have, uh, they have set up, they have, you know, they have assigned a kind of threshold value, right, for their losses. 
सो इफ योर लॉस इज लेस देन इक्वल टू दिस थ्रेस तो होल्ड वैल्यू देन गो विथ दिस एल टू लॉस इफ यू आर नॉट हैविंग आउट लायर्स देन गो विथ एल टू लॉस देर इज नो एनी प्रॉब्लम बट इफ यू आर हैविंग एनी काइंड ऑफ आउट लायर्स इफ यूर लॉस इज नॉट लेस देन इक्वल टू दिस थ्रेस होल्ड वैल्यू देन इन दैट केस यू कैन गो विथ दिस एल वन लॉस बट नॉट डायरेक्टली विथ दिस एल वन लॉस they have uh, they have considered some kind of a regularization factors they have considered this threshold value here delta this delta is a threshold value and they have utilized this threshold value as a regularization factor to regularize these things because again uh, getting you know so here here uh, they will be able to calculate these things but maybe in terms of outlier for a smoothing their expressions for getting a very you know fast calculation and uh, avoiding some kind of problems they have uh, you know they have introduced this particular kind of regularization factors so what they have did they have utilized this l1 loss function modulus of y minus y hat they have multiplied delta with this loss and then they have subtracted this half of delta square value from this one and in that way they are going to introduce a new function that is a huber loss and in this huber loss they are going to combine the both the property both the characteristics of l1 loss and you know l2 losses and this will be much more you know uh, robust in case of whether you are having outliers or not having outliers it will be very much beneficial so you can go with it huber loss is often used in regression problem compared with l2 loss huber loss is less sensitive to outlier because if the residual is too large it is a piece wise function loss is a linear function the residual among them delta is set a parameter yeah so these are the things the advantage of this is what the small yeah fine so again it will try to you know decide whether you are having outliers if you are having then go with this one sorry go with this one and if you don't have then go with this one so maybe this will try to help you now pseudo huber loss function is there so a smooth approximation of huber loss to ensure that each order is differentiable so they have actually implemented some different kind of multiple functions again uh maybe there are various kind of loss functions available but uh, you can try to use these things as per you are having your uh, you know requirement there is a high loss as well so in terms of a high loss high loss is often used for binary classification problem such as ground true will be t will be 1 or minus 1 there will be maybe two classes predicted value will be y will be double plus p in other words closer the y is t uh, to t the uh, smaller the loss will be so you know they have uh, you know introduced a various kind of loss functions so you can go with uh, maybe whatever loss function will be most suited to you you can go with uh, depend upon your use cases right so there are multiple kind of uh, you know loss functions available here now implementation of a high loss so yeah in that way you are going to get these things now coming to the classification so uh, in terms of a machine learning in machine learning so uh, in a logistic regression guys there will be a kind of a log loss that we have used uh, in a decision tree or maybe not in a decision tree so uh, in some other kind of maybe algorithm so whenever we, we are going to you know calculate some kind of losses so there log loss is a kind of a function which we are going to use log loss or maybe i think a likelihood some kind of functions available so I, again i'm not able to recall those things but yeah here a similar kind of thing that people have introduced in terms of a log loss so it is available in a flavor of cross entropy loss right so cross entropy loss people have introduced and whenever you are dealing with a kind of a classification problems so in that case whenever you are having two classes maybe positive class or maybe a negative class so you are supposed to use this cross entropy loss right and this cross entropy loss will be defined as fx will be y minus 1 uh, into log of 1 minus y hat into log of y hat c right now there will be a sigmoid cross entropy loss so uh, they are utilizing you know a uh, sigmoid kind of thing here again for uh, making some kind of a smoothing or maybe some kind of a uh, uh, avoiding some kind of issues so again there are lots of flavors available guys right softmax cross entropy loss right so uh, in that case you are going to utilize these things now i will try to show you one thing so 
there is a library right so as we have a uh, you know uh, as we uh, as i was uh, you know uh, saying about this tensorflow library so this tensorflow library is uh, has been created by google right and this tensorflow library is a very much pythonic way so you are going to create each and everything just using uh, you know whatever things are available in terms of uh, tensorflow you are going to uh, use all of those things but uh, again after some time people have created people have developed a new high level api on top of this tensorflow which is known as keras where you are going to get each and everything in a very you know very easy way like as in a uh, in a terms of a scalar you are going to call each and everything like as okay so for uh, uh, from scalar not pre processing import trend test split from scalar not uh, you know uh, what i can say uh, this one uh, import linear regression logistic regression decision tree so in that case see in a similar way we are going to import each and everything from our keras library and we are going to do our works so guys in this keras library so there may be uh, th there are some kind of docs so i'm just going to show you those things so keras loss functions so yeah so keras.io is uh, its official website and see here there are different kind of multiple loss functions available so binary cross entropy loss right so binary cross entropy loss will be getting used if you are dealing with only two classes positive class negative class if you are dealing with multiple classes maybe three class four class five class ten class hundred class thousands class millions class then go with categorical cross entropy loss there is another a sparse categorical cross entropy loss right now we will try to go with this categorical cross entropy loss so categorical cross entropy is uh, saying that okay fine so you can uh, 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 you know use this cross entropy loss function when there are two or more label classes right yeah more than two we expect uh, labels to be provided in a one hot representation so see whatever labels we are having i mean a target column so if your target column is in terms of a one hot representation if you are uh, you know doing the encodings of your label column in a one hot then in that case use this cross entropy loss otherwise if if your labels are not in a one hot uh, encoding then in that case if you are having your labels just in a maybe in a terms of integers only in that case go with a sparse categorical cross entropy loss both are same but it will vary that whether your label is one hot encoded or it is a integer so in that case go with this one if you are having confusion just try to recall if one hot encoded go with uh, uh, you know your categorical cross entropy and if integers then go with a sparse categorical cross entropy now guys uh, i think i have discussed lots of things but here come here so see there are various kinds of a probabilistic losses so probabilistic losses means what so probabilistic losses means that we are going to calculate some kind of a probabilistic values and based on that we are going to calculate we are going to calculate the losses for our classification task now for a regression task there is msai mai there is mean absolute percentage error mean squared logarithmic error uh, error so see in terms of uh, i can say uh, hmm, what in machine learning there is rmsle right root mean squared logarithmic error or maybe mean squared logarithmic error so same things are available here you can try to go with each and everything cos sin similarity huber loss huber function log cos log cos h so you can go with this particular keras.io slash api slash losses and you will be able to get each and everything and how to import these things so how to you know utilize so here you are going to get each and everything so from tensorflow import keras from tensorflow.keras import layers and then try to create in this form right actually this is this is not the way actually so uh, uh, you know utilizing anything i will i will try to show you each and everything that how to recall how to import and how to fit i will try to show you each and everything but again yeah so from the docs you, you will be able to get these things easily right 
सो गाइज दिज दिज आर दू नो दिज आर सम पॉपुलर लॉस फंक्शन अवेलेबल इन टर्म्स ऑफ अ डीप लर्निंग एज वेल नाउ देयर इज अ कंसेप्ट ऑफ ऑप्टिमाइजर्स सो वॉट इज दिस ऑप्टिमाइजर्स हाउ दिस थिंग्स आर टू मच आई कैन से इम्पॉर्टेंट सो वी विल ट्राई टू लुक अपॉन दिस थिंग्स राइट ओके द रोल ऑफ ऑप्टिमाइजर्स इन डीप लर्निंग सो ऑप्टिमाइजर्स प्लेड अ वाइडल रोल इन न्यूरल नेटवर्क ट्रेनिंग वेन डेटा एंटर्स इन साइड द नेटवर्क विथ इनपुट टोर्स फिट फॉरवर्ड कनेक्शन स्टार्ट एंड इट विल एंड अप विथ गेटिंग सम लॉसेज देन बैकवर्ड प्रोपिकेशन स्टार्ट एंड इट अपडेट्स अ रैंडमली सेलेक्टेड पैरामीटर्स लेयर बाय लेयर इन द नेटवर्क बाई यूजिंग सम ऑप्टिमाइजेशन मैकेनिज्म इन बैकवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो सी वट इज हैपनिंग हेयर सो वी हैव इंजेस्टेड द डेटा डेटा हैज बीन इंटर्ड इन टू द नेटवर्क एफ एफ एन हैज बीन स्टार्टेड एंड वी आर एबल टू कैलकुलेट द लॉस नाउ आफ्टर कैलकुलेटिंग दिस लॉस वी आर गोइंग टू सेंड दिस पर्टिकुलर लॉस हेयर दिस लॉस हेयर इन टू दिस ऑप्टिमाइजर्स एंड देन द बैकवर्ड प्रोपेगेशन विल स्टार्ट इट विल ट्राई टू अपडेट दिस वेट्स लेयर बाई लेयर बट हेयर there will be a mechanism that we are going to use in terms of uh, backward propagation and this mechanism is known as optimization so what is this optimization so optimization means that we are going to optimize the this loss value right we are going to tune this particular parametrical values and in that case we are going to use this optimizers so there are three basic optimizers based on a gradient descent approach that we uses in deep learning so basically guys if you are a uh, if you are uh, aware about uh, you know uh, this gradient descent kind of thing right so just wait guys yeah okay so fine so uh, yeah so in terms of a linear regression so maybe we all have a studied about gradient descent so see what is a gradient descent so gradient descent is nothing i was also trying to discuss about these things in our i can say in that class in which i was talking about how learning is going to happen right so what is the happening that we are trying to calculate the gradients and then we are trying to optimize those things this is a kind of a gradient descent approach right so on basis of this gradient descent kind of algorithm we are having three basic optimizers or maybe we can say Uh, a vanilla kind of optimization a very beginning uh, so see whenever people people were having not any kind of idea they have just you know they have introduced some a uh, vanilla uh, optimizers right so they have introduced three different different optimizers so in a very beginning people were having bgd batch gradient descent then there is another mini batch gradient descent and then there was a stochastic gradient descent or sgd right how these things are going to happen how, what are these things so see batch gradient descent so bgd bgd uses the entire training set to calculate the gradient of the cost function to the parameters in bgd we try to send the whole data set at a time and records are selected randomly and enters to the network one by one then we calculate a combined loss or cost by taking summation of all losses and then we send the cost for optimization for finding out the gradients see what is happening in bgd bgd says that suppose we are having a thousand number of records available inside our data set right thousand number of records so bgd says that we are going to create one batch we are going to create a single batch in which we will be having 1000 records now we are going to send this particular single batch inside the neural network so data will get ingested now from this batch record will be record will be getting inside the network one by one one by one one by one and this network will try to calculate the losses for each and every one and after calculating the losses for each and every one it will try to it will try to calculate their combined losses right so a combined loss it will try to calculate and then this combined loss will be sent for will be get sending for the optimization this is known as bgd 
means batch gradient descent means a full batch is considered in a single iteration right so whatever records you are having inside your data set so each and every records entire data set will be converted into a batch into a single batch and that batch will getting inside the network and we are supposed to calculate the combined losses for them and guys in that case we are going to calculate these things right this is our bgd now uh, it says that uh, yeah so in bgd it will be able to do optimization if it will be able to pass entire data set to the neural network right so what is happening here so it will try to send one by one records one by one records and it will try to calculate their losses right and unless and until it will not be able to calculate the uh, losses for each and every records it will not be going to do the optimization it will not be going to update your weights so first of all it will try to calculate each and every things and then it will try to send these things to our optimizers right guys i think there is a too much disturbances so i think uh, just wait for some time okay guys uh, so see so this was the batch gradient descent so here we are trying to create uh, we are trying to consider the whole entire data set and we are going to create a batch a single batch from your entire data set and this single batch is getting ingested inside your network then it will try to uh, you know it will try to take each and every records one by one and it will calculate the losses for each and every records and then it will consider it will calculate the combined losses and then it will send it for the optimization so guys in this way we can try to uh, you know use this batch gradient descent now here batch gradient descent can converge to a global minimum for convex functions and to a local minimum for non convex functions so this says that guys so uh, see so uh, whenever we can talk about a convex function or a maybe a non convex function so there is a uh, there is some kind of maybe a different different kinds of functions available there so in that case just try to remember this line if you belongs to mathematics uh, maybe if you are having your backgrounds in into maybe a uh, mathematics then you can try to explore all uh, these things in a little bit depth and then you will be able to understand the meaning of this line but again yeah in terms of a convex function it will be converged to a global minimum and for a non convex it will go for a local minimum again what is a minimum what is a global minimum what is local minimum so when we can try to talk about maybe a c so mini uh, minima and maxima minima and maxima so see guys this is a kind of c i will try to open this particular thing right so see here yeah so this is a kind of functions right so here there will be somewhere a saddle point saddle point and there will be some kind of place where you are going to get a very higher value this is known as maxima and there will be a kind of a lower value which will be your minima so a function which will so see whenever you are going to talk about a batch gradient descent so there will be only one minima and only one maxima because you are going to consider each and every you know you are going to consider a combined losses for each and every records you are not going to consider each and every uh, you know separate separate records no you are going to consider each and every records in just a combined way and in that way you are going to you know get you are going to get a single global minima a single local minima or maybe a global minima global maxima right and in that case we are supposed to converge to that minima point so this is a minima this is the maxima in that way okay now come to another point now there are some kind of a pros and cons so what are the cons available in this one so memory consumption is too high okay how the memory consumption will be too high so see whenever you are going to consider your entire data set into a single batch and you are going to calculate their combined losses and you are going to optimize them togetherly so there uh, there is a you, you know there is a huge possibilities that you are not going to deal with only 1000 records or 10000 records there is a very high possibility 
दैट योर डेटा सेट शुड हैविंग मोर देन टेन थाउजेंड रिकॉर्ड्स मे बी मिलियंस ऑफ रिकॉर्ड्स और बिलियंस ऑफ रिकॉर्ड्स एंड फॉर फिटिंग ईच एंड एवरी रिकॉर्ड्स इन टू योर मेमरी यू विल लीड अ वेरी हाई अमाउंट ऑफ मेमरी सो अ हाई रैम इज रिक्वायर्ड इट विल इट विल रिक्वायर्ड यू नो वेरी हाई मेमरी कंजम्पन सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ अबिजी मेमरी कंजम्पन विल बी टू हाई If you are not able to fulfill its requirement, it will try to give you an issue, and your your system will go for a toss. It will not be able to converge to your local minima point, and your work will be incomplete. Now, calculation of gradients will be slow. So yeah, it is fine. Again, there is a huge number of computations, and that's why calculation of gradients will be slow. computationally very expensive because you are going to burn your lots of computational resources in a just a single while of time not good to update the model in a real time so it's not a good way not a good optimizer to update your model in a real time so in real time means that whenever you are going to get a data on a fly it will not be able to update your model it will not be able to train your model over uh, that flying data so these are uh, i can say a uh, kind of a disadvantages uh, maybe a cons of bgd guys that you have to uh, you know remember and maybe you have to recall maybe in terms of your interviews right now guys there is a mini batch gradient descent mbgd so people who were using this bgd uh, they were facing this kind of issue and they were uh, looking for some kind of uh, maybe uh, you know uh, improvements so they have come to a conclusion that okay fine so we are trying to create a batch but uh, there are heavy number of records so try to do one thing try to do one thing and uh, try to reduce the number of records into the batches so they have uh, introduced this particular mini batch concept they have said okay fine so now we are not having a single batch we will be having multiple batches multiple mini batches and in that mini batches we will be having some n number of records and that n number will be uh, actually you can you can you can say it you can consider any records at your n but they have advised no your n will lying in this range 52 to 56 they have advised so in this range guys you can try to set your mini batches and then you can try to send this mini batches for the optimization here these mini batches are selected randomly and enters to the neural networks one by one then we calculate cost for each mini batches and send for optimization so what is happening here guys so they are going to send mini batches so first mini batch then second mini batch third mini batch or not actually in this way not in a consecutive way first mini batch Eighth mini batch, tenth mini batch, hundredth mini batch, maybe twelfth mini batch, then third mini batch. So in a random way, these mini batches will try to ingest in the network, and then they will be able to calculate the losses for a uh, combined losses for each and every mini batches, and in a similar way they will be send these things for optimizations, right? Now in this way. in bgd c uh, in a single iteration one mini batch pass c c guys there is a iteration there is a iteration so iteration means what so iteration means that uh, you are sending your data for ffn and bpn means you are sending your data inside your network for learning those things right so the number of iteration people pay the c c guys this is a very much uh, important question a very much important point that interviewer will try to confuse you here so they will ask you okay fine so tell me what is the difference between a uh, iteration and uh, maybe there are some other uh, terms like as uh, epochs and uh, batch sizes or maybe batches so see batches we have seen right batches we have seen so batches are nothing but a kind of a, maybe a groups a collections of records that we are considering for sending inside the network so batches mini batches we have seen now there is a iteration so this iteration will be depend upon the total number of batches that we are having like as in a bgd we are having a single batch here in terms of a mini batches we are having n mini batches 
so there will be n iterations and iterations means what iterations means that we are sending we are sending some data through the network and we are uh, we are able to calculate the cost and we are sending it to for the optimization this is known as a iteration now in a single iteration one mini batch passes through the network and we calculate the cost and send it for optimization and then update the parameters and in next iteration some other mini batches will be passes and we calculate the cost and update the weights so yeah in a sequence each and every mini batches will ingested through the network we will be able to calculate their combined losses and in that way guys we are able to update our weights MBGD MBGD uses a small batch of samples that is n sample to calculate each time. In this way, it can reduce the variance when the parameters are updated and the convergence is more stable. It can make full use of highly optimized matrix operations in the deep learning library for more efficient gradient calculation. MBGD is modified version of BGD but with multiple mini batches with n belongs to 52 to 56 records. In MBGD, if batch size is equal to total number of records in data set, it becomes BGD. So yeah, we are we are trying to, you know, we are splitting our batches into some n number of records. If the number of records will be equal to the records available in the entire data set, then our MBGD will become to BGD. And then again, we, we are going to face all those issues. Now compare to BGD, MBGD is resource efficient, consumes low memory and calculation is faster. Now again there are some kind of uh, cons available here as well. So mini batch gradient addition does not give a guarantee that we will be able to do a good convergence of data or error in a better way. Causes due to randomly selection of batches because samples are extracted from data set don't represent the properties of entire data set and so we don't get a good convergence and so also not a absolute global minima or local minima point. So see guys, here. In a BGD, we are trying to send the whole batch, entire batch, and we are converging to we are converging to a, a you know a absolute global minima point, or in terms of a non-convex function, a local minima point. But here in the mini batch gradient descent, we are going to create, we are going to you know send this mini batches in a random way in a random way so randomly selection of batches will be performed here and this randomly selected batches mini batches will be ingested inside the network and there is a huge possibility that we are not going to get a good convergence of data because see there is a there is a there is a uh, you know entire batch entire data set now we are just considering this particular uh, batch mini batch so this will not try to you know represent the properties of entire data set so see in a first iteration we are sending this one in a second we are sending this one in a third we are sending this one in a fourth we are sending this one then this one so in this case we are sending different different mini batches and both mini batches will represent the different different properties of entire data set and guys this will not uh, you know uh, able to you know give you a good kind of convergence and there will be some kind of problems some kind of issues you are going to face <coughs> see if learning rate eta is to a small my convergence rate falls and time to take for finding out the absolute minima will increase and in case of a high learning rate eta it will not be able to achieve absolute minima and it will keep oscillating between maximum values and minima values caused due to different errors getting for different mini batches so see here we are having different mini batches so here we are considering different different kinds of maximum values and minimum values and we have to converge between different different kinds of minima point local minima point and in that one guys you have to set up your learning rate in a such a way that it will be able to achieve your minimaj in a right way. But there will, there will be a kind of a trade off between a high learning rate or maybe a low learning rate. And then you will be able to maybe achieve your local minima in a good way. But it will be very much difficult. Now we should control the learning rate eta in case of MBGD. In addition, this method is to apply the same learning rate to all parameter updates if our data is sparse with prefer to lower frequencies. See, 
yeah again so it will depend upon how you are going to you know give your learning rate uh, how you are going to control these things or maybe you are going to give a same learning rate to all parameter updates or what so it will depend now in addition for non-convex function it is also necessary to avoid trapping the local minimum or saddle point so see guys these things uh, you can try to go with yourself but again the main difference is that in a pgd you are sending whole batch in a one iteration a combined loss you are you are going to you know calculate and then then you are going to pass these things through the optimizers in a mbgd there will be a number of mini batches and you are going to calculate these things with uh, each and every mini batches and then you are going to update all those things right so guys in this way bgd mbgd has been introduced then people again we are facing people have modified lots of things but again they were still facing some kind of issues so then they have introduced a new optimizer that is a stochastic gradient descent this is the third one so in a stochastic gradient descent a single record is selected and sent to the neural network so here we are not going to create a batches here we are just considering the entire data set and we are considering a single single record in a single iteration we are picking a single record we are sending this through the near through our neural network so we calculate the loss for this single record and send it for optimization and update the weights then in next iteration some other records are sent to the network individually and we calculate the loss and update the weight so here in a sgd we are going to consider a single single record each and every time and these records will be selected on a random basis and in each and every iterations consecutive iterations we are going to send some different records single single records and in this way guys we are going to calculate each and every losses for each and every records and in that way we are going to do the back propagation and update the weights this is sgd here in sgd loss function and optimizers are not supposed to wait for the entire data set to calculate themselves because in a bgd mbgd unless and until you are not going to pass your you know whole batches or whole mini batches you are you are not going to calculate you know their losses and uh, optimizations will not going to you know perform right but here here uh, your loss function your optimizers are not supposed to wait for the entire data set to calculate themselves right now comparing bgd sgd works just with a single iteration and so requires less computational resources but takes more time to train the network so see here guys now here this bgd sgd uh, comparing to bgd sgd works just with a single iteration and it require a very less computational resources a very less memory it will take and also a very less amount of time because again there is just a single record and you have to calculate only for a single record so that's it is a very much uh, efficient computational efficient right comparing to bgd and mgd in a bgd it will get converged to local minima point but in sgd it will always oscillates or vary between one point to other for each and every data set so it's very difficult to get absolute minima point in sgd we get multiple minimum values for entire data set and we get some zigzag type curve and minimas will keep fluctuating for sgd learning rate data should be laser comparing to bgd and mgd sgd is faster than bgd and mgd so yeah sgd is faster than bgd and mgd and learning rate data should be laser comparing to these things now guys there is a two points right here so see whenever we are having a you know a sgd so there we are going to calculate our losses for each and every different different records right each and every individual records and for each and every individual records we are having a different kind of loss functions and for each and every different kind of losses we are going to calculate we are going to find out different different i can say minima point so in this case it is not able to achieve the absolute minima because here here see you are going to calculate these things in this way right in this way and there will be millions of records so millions of records there will be a millions of jig jag kind of curve you are going to get there will be a millions of minimas you are going to get 
and it is not possible to converge each and every losses to a single absolute minima point. So you are supposed to converge each and every losses to their local minima and in that way in that way your convergence will not be going to a smooth it will take lots of amount of time it is it will be computationally efficient it will be take your you know it will not try to burn your huge computational resources but here your convergence time will be too much use sgt will be too see here SGT is faster than BGD and MBGD, right? It is fine. But here convergence will be too much slower, too much slower because you are going to take, you are going to pick and choose a single, single record for each and every time. And then you are uh, struggling for converging to the local minimum points for each and every single individual records. So guys, again, whether you are dealing with a BGD, MBGD, SGD, both are having their pros and cons and both are having some different different kinds of things. So you are supposed to know about each and everything. Now, however, because SGD is updated more frequently, the cost function will have severe, severe uh, oscillations. BGD can converge to a local minimum. Of course, the oscillation of SGD may jump to a better local minimum. Yeah. So in this way, guys, we can uh, go with SGD. When we decrease the learning rate slightly, the convergence of SGD and BGD is the same. So again, it will depend upon also on the learning rate. So yeah, these are the things again, guys, in terms of a BGD, MBGD, SGD, which are three different vanilla versions of the optimizers. Now for BGD, MBGD and SGD, see BGD, MBGD and SGD are some ways to pass the data from neural networks. So see guys, what are optimizers? So these optimizers are nothing but these are a kind of way, a kind of way to pass your data from neural networks. So how you are going to pass your data inside the neural networks? So these are the ways. In BGD, you are going to create a single batch. In MBGD, there will be many batches, n number of mini batches. In SGD, there will be n number of uh, n number of batches having a single single record, right? So in a BGD, one batch, right? So one iteration in MBGD, n number of mini batches, n number of mini batches. So n number of iterations in SGD, there will be n number of batches or maybe mini batches, but with a single, single iteration. So if you are having a thousand of records or a millions of records, so millions of iterations you are supposed to perform in terms of a SGD right so guys i think these are the things that you have to know now in terms of uh, these optimizers we are going to use this kind of equation so this is a differential equation that we are we are, we are uh, supposed to use in terms of updating our weights so see it is not new weight new so i i is the iterations so in the next iteration what will be our weights newer weights so weight i plus one i plus one means that for newer next iteration so weight new will be weight old minus eta into this differential, this differential. And this eta will belongs in this range 0 0.001 to 10. Now optimizers are ways to calculate the gradients and update the parameters. Yeah, guys. So these are the ways to calculate the gradient and update the parameters. Now I think uh, there is a concept of, uh, I can say deep learning, sorry, momentum in a deep learning. So what is the momentum? How these things are going to happen? So basically guys, I think uh, there is a huge number of uh, topics that I have discussed here today. So I think I have to just uh, keep these things. Uh, mm, I have to take, uh, uh, I can say a gap here. I will not going to explain each and everything in just a single while. So uh, tomorrow I will going to discuss about uh, this momentum, how this momentum is getting introduced in terms of a deep learning then there will be some different different kinds of a momentum best optimizers will which will be very much necessary because bgd mbgd sgd are just uh, i can say vanilla version right new version but today we are always going to use this kind of momentum optimizers momentum best so i think uh we should require to go with uh, one another class and then i think after these optimizers we will be 
coming on some kind of comparisons there and then we will be able to you know go with some another kind of things maybe multi layer perceptrons and then we will try to do the practical implementations guys fine so i think guys this is all from my side for today and uh, then in the next uh, session in uh, tomorrow session i will try to explain uh, the uh, you know the next topics next optimizers so i think uh, guys uh, mm, try to give a like try to uh, subscribe our channel if you are new here and uh, again guys so i will uh, i will be going to give you this particular uh, notebook this particular notebook in this particular video link right so there will be a github repo you have to clone that particular github repo and then you will be able to get each and every kind of things because see guys lots of people were uh, you know making arguments that okay fine i need this notebook i need this notebook because i have to go with the notes and all of those things so that is fine but this kind of diagrams you are going to get here or whatever pictures this will not be available if you are only having access to the notebook i can try to give you these things in a just in a you know a very uh, you know simple way but again just wait keep patience in this uh, description of this video i am going to paste your link try to navigate to that particular github repo clone the repo and you will be able to get each and everything regarding this particular notebook each and every uh, pictures each and every diagrams and each and every kind of things right and guys uh, don't forget to give us a like don't forget to subscribe if you are new here and be stay with here uh, uh, stay tuned here and uh, we will be you know going to uh, discuss each and everything regarding a uh, deep learning regarding computer vision regarding nlp as our journey has been just started so just be chill and try to go with the notes and be yourself for uh, too much accurate with each and every theoretical aspects guys right yeah so guys now i think uh, i have to sign out from here and uh, then i will come to uh, you know next video and then i will try to start with some other new topics so thanks guys bye bye